Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm Grace Holland. The 2024 hurricane season is predicted to be the busiest season ever. NOAA forecasts there is an 85% chance of more named storms and an above average number of major hurricanes. WREL meteorologist Brian Schrader is here with me to break down what this means for us in North Carolina. Brian, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. So what exactly is NOAA predicting this year? Well, what really stands out to me are the numbers, 17 to 25 named storms. We're talking tropical storms and hurricanes. They predict that 8 to 13 of those will become hurricanes, which means they'll get winds of 74 miles an hour or greater. And they're saying that 4 to 7 of those could become major hurricanes. What really stands out to me, though, is how confident they are in this forecast. They, it's an 85 percent confidence level that they believe this is going to be an above normal season. And for a, a, a hurricane season outlook, that's a really high confidence level. They are expecting a very busy season. Okay. And what is your reaction to that prediction? We just need to we need to be on point here as we get ready for this. You know, uh, one of the th- one of the good things I guess we could say about hurricanes is that we have so much lead time. We watch them for a week or more. So we have a lot of time to get prepared for it. And here at the end of May, before you really get into the heart of the season, now is the time to think about what you can do to get ready for hurricanes. Right. And so this prediction, how does it compare with what we've seen from NOAA in recent years and how the season played out. Last year was a weird forecast. They were they called for 12 to 17 named storms. We got 20. So it was mm. a, it really exceeded it in terms of total storm activity. Uh, they were calling for five to nine hurricanes. We got seven. There were three major hurricanes. They said one to four. What stood out last year is they were not very confident in the forecast. We had the ocean heat last year that was at record levels in the Atlantic, and we thought, oh, okay, well, that really kind of tells the story that this is going to be a busy season. But we also had El Nino, which is a pattern in the Pacific that influences winds across the Atlantic, and it increases wind shear, and that's something that works against hurricane formation. So the meteorologists were looking at all of those factors, and they just did not have a lot of confidence in last year's forecast. That really stood out last year that they were like even odds that it's going to be above normal, even odds it was going to be normal. So to see this year that they are so confident in it, that really stands out. Right. And how accurate are NOAA's predictions usually? I know you mentioned it sounded like they were kind of conservative last year. Are they usually conservative? Yeah, they are. Uh, and, and typically, uh, you know, NOAA, Colorado State University, NC State University forecasters, they all put out a, a, a seasonal outlook at the beginning of the hurricane season. And we are pretty good at kind of giving those ballpark estimates this early in the season. I don't know if it's very valuable to the public to say, oh, it's going to be a busy hurricane season, except that it raises awareness. Mm -hmm. We can't tell you at this point where those storms are going to strike, what time of year they're going to strike. It just kind of gets you on notice to start paying attention to hurricanes. All right. Let's take a quick break right there. Okay, so, Brian, why are they predicting all of these storms this year? Why so many? Remember, I told you with last year's forecast, we had those record warm ocean temperatures Mm -hmm. in the Atlantic. It's almost as warm this season. So there is a huge factor that leads to hurricane development. You kind of think of that as the fuel for those storms, that really warm ocean water. What's different this year is that instead of El Nino, it looks like we are in a La Nina pattern, which is the opposite. And instead of increasing wind shear across the Atlantic, which works against the formation of those storms, it reduces the wind shear. So those storms have a chance to spin up and and get stronger. Uh, Also, there's sort of a similar issue uh, as far as the big picture. There's a stronger monsoon over the western part of Africa, and that's where we get those waves, those low-pressure systems that form in the western part of Africa that move off the coast into the Atlantic that eventually can develop into tropical systems. It looks like that's going to be a little stronger this year. So there are three big factors that are working toward a busier season. Right. And You know, I know you said before the break, we can't say exactly where these storms are going to hit or anything, but what can we kind of prepare for here in North Carolina? It's really important uh, for people maybe who are new to North Carolina, who don't remember Hurricane Fran back in 1996 or the other storms. Florence. That that was my first storm in North Carolina. Matthew, you know, all of those big ones from the, the 2010s even that have done a lot of damage inland. We do face risks here in the Triangle and throughout our viewing area, even this far inland. 
wind risks, tornadoes, flash flooding, and as we saw with Matthew and Florence, river flooding that can Mm -hmm. really last a long time and do a lot of damage. So it's the time to go to WRL.com. You can type hurricane in the search box. If you are, especially if you're new to North Carolina, we can help you get prepared for it. You need to have that kit with three to five days of food and water, a battery powered radio, all those basics, because no matter what these numbers say, you know, 25 storms, seven major hurricanes, whatever it is, all it takes is one right. that hits you, and it's yeah. the most impactful hurricane season of your life. Right. Um, and as we move towards that, um, you know, when does hurricane season start? How long do people need to be on guard? Those kind of things. Roughly June through November. Uh, in the past couple of years, we've kind of noticed some trends that have shifted that window a little earlier into mid-May. We haven't seen that much tropical activity this year, but especially in as we get into July, August, September, you really need to pay attention uh, to our forecasts because that's when we have the climatological peak of, of problems with hurricanes. Uh, any other final thoughts for people as we get ready for this? Yeah, the, uh, the National Hurricane Center, which is the, uh, the, that's the part of NOAA that forecasts hurricanes in the Atlantic and the Pacific. They're going to be doing some new uh, experimental things this year, that forecast cone that we are so used to seeing. They're going to be experimenting with some new ways to communicate that risk, especially for inland areas with flooding and wind. So look for that this season. Uh, They're also going to be updating uh, watches and warnings more frequently as we get those intermediate updates through the day when they are tracking a storm. And they're also going to be introducing two new models that will be really helpful with forecasting. One, One uh, is designed to take uh, the ocean's role into account a little more than other models as far as hurricane intensification. And there's another one that really is focused on storms that intensify rapidly, which is something that we have seen in recent years and something that we really have to pay attention to here when you get a storm out over the Gulf Stream where the water is so much warmer, it can intensify rapidly. So we have some new tools here to hopefully provide better forecasts. All right. And of course, here... WRL, our meteorology team, will be here to help as we move through this. So thank you, Brian. Absolutely. And thank you for listening to the WREL Daily Download. Another great way to get WREL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email that's waiting in your inbox every morning with local news, events, and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at WREL.com newsletter.